welcome to my live stream. Um, so today I'm gonna do a get ready with me um, live video. So I'm gonna do my makeup and gonna have a little chit chat with you. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, but who do I have with me here today on the stream? Let me get this set up right. Okay, I think that should be okay. All right, hello, we have Denise, hi. Victoria, oh, thank you Victoria, that's so sweet. Denise from Houston, great. And on YouTube, who do we have? Come on guys, don't be shy. All right, so we got Lokesh, that's a cool name. Samantha Page, oh, thank you. Lex Doll for life. <laughs> Cool. All right, so I'm just gonna get started with um, the makeup look because it can take a while if I'm gonna chat with you, but feel free to ask me your questions so I can answer. And uh, yeah, you can ask me anything about waist training, about health, about fitness, um, you know, feminine energy, all of those topics that we love to talk about. So yeah, I'm an open book. Um, and just so you guys know, I'm going to start with a beauty blender. I do all of my foundation with a beauty blender. I feel like it just blends more naturally. And I'm going to use this Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in shade 5.75. Okay. Hi, Marina. Thank you. We've got Yahya, Daniel, Samuel. Lokesh from India, cool. Liliana from Japan. Okay, let's see what Liliana says. So I'm wearing the short torso and I feel like my belly isn't being covered because I don't feel any tightening there to help me lose it while dieting. So the short torso is just as effective as the medium torso or the long torso. And we have the waist trainers designed so that they're longer in the front and shorter in the back. And it should feel snug, it shouldn't feel loose, but it also should not feel suffocating. So if you feel like you're really having, um, you know, not able to breathe or it's too tight or restrictive, then that's not how it should feel either. So it's kind of like that in between feeling. And I think the best way for you to kind of know is measure your waist with the waist trainer off and then measure it with the waist trainer on. And essentially, your waist should be like at least 0.5 inches smaller with the waist trainer on. That means it's the right size. Because if it's the same size or bigger with the waist trainer on, then it's um, not the right size. It's not really gonna be having any effect. But sometimes you might not feel that it's like super compressing and you might worry that you're not gonna see results, but it doesn't have to always be so, so tight. Um, you can still see great results just feeling comfortable. Okay, let me start with this. Got Michelle from Iowa. Hi, Michelle. All right, so I just put like a very thin coat of foundation. I don't like putting too much on because then it looks, um, you know, like you're wearing a mask and I wanna look like myself. And by the way, um, you know, having a good base, like good skin, I think is one of the most important parts when it comes to makeup because, you know, if you have to cover up a lot, a lot of um, skin discoloration or acne or blemishes, then of course your makeup isn't going to look as smooth. And so I think great skin starts from within. It's what you're putting in your body because your skin is the largest organ on your body. And like we have so much skin and so what happens is the skin is a reflection of how healthy you are inside. And I strongly believe this because I know when I'm not feeling my best, and I've been eating bad and poorly and, you know, having maybe some certain conditions that I need to work on, my, it's reflected in my skin. And actually, you know, if you guys have been following me, you know that I've been doing a cleanse for the last, like a, a detox for the last four months. So it's a pretty intense um, cleanse. And the reason I have been doing that, I haven't shared this with you yet because I kind of want to wait for the before and after review, but essentially I had some really bad back acne 
and I know I made a video about this once before and I said that I solved it and I thought I did but it came back and so I don't have acne really anywhere else on my body but it was on my back and it's not because I'm not clean I'm like a clean freak it's not um, you know the foods that I'm eating because I eat really clean but it is a result of something that's going on with my body. So what's going on on my skin is basically a symptom of what's happening in my body. And so basically it's, it's telling me, hey, there's something wrong, work on me, help me, fix me. And so I took um, initiative and started this um, really good cleanse with a naturopathic doctor who I trust. Anything she tells me to do, I'll do. And, um, and I've noticed like significant in, uh, improvements. And so I'm gonna do another video where I do like a before and an after, but it's a lot better now. It's not perfect because there's still acne scars. Anyone who's had acne, you know that it doesn't just go away overnight. You need to get treatments done. And um, But essentially like there's no new acne, which means that I am solving what's going on in my body. So whatever that condition was, I'm healing it. And for me, that was candida overgrowth and leaky gut and most people have these things and they don't even realize it so i'm really happy that i've been working so hard on fixing that and through the process of dieting and cleansing my skin has just gotten a lot more luminous my hair is a lot healthier i've lost weight i'm more toned i don't have bloating anymore and that was one thing i hated so much is that bloating and enzymes and probiotics help waist training helps but if you are having issues from within your body there's nothing that you can do externally to fix that you need to work from within and so that's why it's really figuring out okay what is it what is causing this why are you bloated all the time Tatiana that's not normal you know you might feel like it's normal because you've lived your whole life feeling bloated but that's not how your body should be operating so there must be something that's going on that is contributing to that and so like I mentioned leaky gut this is something that most people have and not even aware of it and you can get this through antibiotic use. And this is what happened to me because in society that we live in, especially in North America, doctors over prescribe antibiotics. It's like, as soon as you have anything, it's like, oh, let's take antibiotics. But really like antibiotics are amazing. They save lives, but it's your last resort. I highly don't recommend taking antibiotics for just like the flu or something simple. Like just let your body heal itself on its own because every time you take a dose of antibiotics, it kills all of the bad bacteria, but it also kills the good stuff. And so it, it decreases your immune system. It causes leaky gut and uh, it's just, it causes, um, it's like a bomb inside your body where it, it annihilates everything, the good and the bad. And so every time you take antibiotics, you have to kind of um, build up that immunity again, and it's really damaging. And most people don't even realize that when they take antibiotics, they should, after the antibiotics, take an enormous amount of probiotics. So probiotics are the good bacteria, and most people don't do that. And doctors don't tell people to do that. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of my thing. And then just having too many antibiotics as a child and, you know, my teenage years. And then, um, yeah, and then the candida overgrowth is just like so common if you've, from antibiotic use and also if you have a poor diet. So if you have a lot of sugars, refined carbs, you know, you probably have candida overgrowth, which, uh, yeah, self-explanatory. But, you know, I have an example. I have a friend named Somi. And she's actually a follower of mine, and I met her. I'm using NARS um, concealer. I met her in Vancouver once because she wanted a waist trainer. And uh, she was sharing with me this before and after picture of hers. And she lost like 30 pounds. She looked amazing. And I asked her what she did, and she's like, you know what, I had candida overgrowth, and I just stuck to a certain diet. I cut out all sugars and all carbs and the weight just fell off. She's like, I've never had it so easy to lose weight. It was always a struggle for me to lose weight. But once I discovered that I had candida overgrowth, I understood, I, I you know, Googled it and talked to doctors, went on a diet plan and it became so much easier. And because what happens is you have inflammation in your body when your body, this is just um, like a, a really, really light concealer called Born This Way. And it's like a sculpting concealer, so it's exaggerated. It's good for filming um, so so yeah the weight just fell off for her and that happens to a lot of people sometimes if you're struggling so much 
to lose weight, there's a reason for that. It's not really you. It's like what's going on in your body. And uh, so yeah, so figure that out. Get the blood tests done. Invest in yourself because I know it's not cheap to get these blood tests done and to talk with a reputable naturopath, but this is your life and this is the most important thing. There's nothing in life more important than health because you can have you know, so many blessings in your life, but if you don't have amazing health or even just good health in general, then you're really not gonna enjoy a lot of these amazing things in your life, including, you know, amazing memories with family and amazing adventures and travel and even just normal things. You just can't enjoy it as much and you also can't be there for your family if they're having to take care of you. So there are different ways to look at it. But anyway, so yeah, so I've been on this cleansing journey and it's really changed my life because also what happens is when you're, um, when you're always craving foods, that's the crazy thing, when you're always craving foods, it's not really your fault. Now I'm not saying don't take responsibility, you have to because that's the only way that you can control this. But um, oftentimes when people really have a lot of cravings for sweet things, for sugary things, it's not their brains talking, it's these bacteria within your body, your bacteria control your thoughts, they control your emotions. And so basically the bacteria want to be fed and so they get fed by the sugars and the carbs and all of the crap that you eat. And so when they're hungry, they give you a signal to your brain of, hey, I crave sweets, I crave this, I crave that. And, uh, and then your brain's like, oh, I gotta go and eat something. And so your bacteria are telling you to eat all this food. And so what happens is the, the deal is you have to kill off all of that bad bacteria. Not all of it, but you have to kill off like the overgrowth of the candida. And once you do that, then all of a sudden you have, you know, your head is clearer, you don't have brain fog, you feel less depressed, you have more energy during the day, and it's like they're not controlling you. And I know it sounds crazy, but that's really how it works like scientifically. And, um, and so then you get to the point where you don't have cravings anymore. So at this point, like, I don't have cravings for sugar, I don't have cravings for, you know, a lot of sweet things. Yeah, I, I do have balance, like I can have some treats now and then, but I don't need it. And I remember feeling this point in my life where it's like, I need it, I need something now, I, I need this sugar rush. And it's crazy how that's not me, that's the little bacteria within me that's controlling my thoughts. And so they noticed that a lot of people who have candida overgrowth, tend to have like very um, uh, depressive thoughts. I'm not naked, I'm wearing a tube top. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so yeah, anyways, that's just kind of like a little story for you guys because I think that's so important and I know that so many people struggle with um, just weight loss and, and emotions and emotional eating and I really, really wanna encourage you to get the blood work done. It's so important because we all have something, you know? I always thought I'm like super healthy, I go to the gym, I eat healthy, but even I had something that's taken me five months to cleanse out of my body and I'm still not done. So everyone kind of has something unless, you know, you've got a great system. Um, but yeah, so just take that into consideration. All right, let me move on to a different step. What did I do already? Um, so I did concealer, I did some foundation. Let's do some bronzer. Um, what will I use? Okay, so I'm gonna use this stick, which I is old, so I don't know what it's called now. It's like the Smashbox. And I'm just gonna put it like here to give me more contour. And then also on my forehead. And then on my nose. And then a little bit on my chin here, cause that's how you Tighten it all up. All right, so I'm gonna blend it out with the same beauty blender and take some questions. So apple cider vinegar is um, a good thing to take in the mornings. I actually do recommend it. If you take a shot of apple cider vinegar each morning, it does help with um, 
weight loss. People see really good results with that. But honestly, it's like, you know, losing weight isn't that complicating. I think it's complicating because of society, of every magazine telling us to do a different thing. There's always a new diet trend. And sometimes, you know what, we have the answers. We know the answers. We don't have to seek external validation all the time, seek external experts. Like, we know what is good for us. And I think we all know that, okay, you know, cutting out junk food and not having processed foods and not drinking sodas and not drinking your calories and um, eating more veggies and alkalizing your body. Like, these are all things that we kind of all already know. It's basic common knowledge. It's just doing it, you know? It's like, we just need to have the discipline. And I think what happens is, you know, we start a diet and then we go off the diet, we start a diet and we give up. And it's like, that's just lack of discipline. And you get to a point eventually, I think everyone kind of gets to this point in some shape or form in their lives where they're just so fed up with where they are in life. They're just tired of always feeling these emotions, this roller coaster of feeling great and then like feeling shitty and then, you know, losing 10 pounds and then gaining five back. And it's just, you get pissed off with always self sabotaging. And eventually you just go all in. And I think when you get to that point where you just commit to it, that's when the change happens. And you just kind of have to, like, there's no trick to that. You just have to come to that realization yourself that you can't continue doing this cycle that you always do. Like, notice it, be aware of it, and um, just commit to, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore because this is not serving me in my life. I want to live my best self. I want to live my life to its fullest potential. And I have one life on earth, and um, why should I spend one more day feeling shitty? Why should I spend one more day unhappy in my body? Why should I spend one more day not feeling confident? I owe it to myself and to the people who I surround myself with. Because when I'm confident, when I love myself, when I have energy and I feel healthy, I can be the best version of me. And I can be better at work. I can show up better for my family, my children. I can be a better spouse. Like your life just improves. So it's not just about looking a certain way. It's really all about how you feel. And oftentimes when we are sick and we're, you know, sick as in just eating poor food all the time, that affects your energy levels. And when you don't have the energy to, you know, do a lot of the amazing things in life, that's just unfortunate because you're missing out and you never get that day back. Each day that goes by, you'll never get that back. So I just choose, you know what, I want to live the best version of my, myself in this lifetime and that will require discipline. And, um, and yeah, it's just, what are your values? Do you value, you know, these things or do you not value them? And if you want to value them, then you have to prioritize them. All right, let me just move this back. Cause everyone thinks I'm naked and I'm not. I'm wearing a tube top. Still looks like I'm naked though. On Facebook, you guys can see I'm wearing a shirt, but on YouTube, you can't. It's a little yellow shirt. All right, let's just move on to the next one and I'll take a question. So I'm on my eyes, I'm just gonna use like a tiny bit of concealer just as a base so that eyeshadow doesn't fall off. And yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, so I was talking about healthy skin. So number one is your diet. That's like the most important thing. If you're eating crappy foods, it's gonna be reflected in your skin. And number two is drinking a lot of water. So I don't drink anything except water and matcha green tea. I don't drink any caffeine. Caffeine dehydrates your skin. So if you want to age and you know your skin be dry and wrinkly, then you'll be drinking a lot of caffeine. And I personally don't want that. So no caffeine for me. Um, and then also just making sure that you clean your skin, you know, like making sure that it's because we, when you wear makeup like this, like the heavy makeup like this, um, your skin will get clogged. And so you have to make sure every night that you're washing your face. I used to fall asleep with my makeup on all the time. And uh, over time you get blackheads and your skin quality is not so good and you get pigmentation. And so now I just make sure I got this like 
um, scrubby brush on Amazon, this like rubber vibrating thing. And every night I wash my face with it and it works really well. It clears things out because when you wear foundation, it's like deep in there. And so just using your hands oftentimes doesn't get all the makeup off. If you use a white towel, you pat your face and then you realize my makeup's still on even though I just washed my face. So getting something like that on Amazon could work well for you. And then also, um, you know, ex if you have blackheads and stuff, getting those extracted I think helps a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do this shiny stuff. Or no, wait, not yet. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna do setting powder under my eyes and I'll take a question. Liliana says, I'm scared to live in America because if I get sick, they'll give me so much antibiotics. That depends who you go to, right? Like you can go to a uh, you know, normal um, doctor or you could go to someone that you know and trust and someone that has a reputation for always looking for the natural uh, alternative. Because oftentimes they're like, you know what? Like I'd never take Tylenol, I never take Advil. When I have the flu or I'm sick, I let my body detox on its own and oftentimes it will heal a lot faster than if I were to take all those things. And the reason for that is because when you're taking Tylenol and Advil, you're just suppressing your symptoms. You're just suppressing the symptoms. And if you're sneezing and you don't wanna sneeze, well, you're sneezing because your body is trying to get rid of things. So let your body do that, let your body detoxify. And so I don't believe in taking, you know, medications just for any little thing. I believe that our, our bodies have an amazing power to adapt and to heal. And I think we should just let them, you know, not interfere, basically. I have not heard of, actually I have heard of Pure. Is it Pure 100% Organic, the skincare and makeup line? Because yes, I have heard of that. So I'm just putting some setting powder underneath my eyes. Um, just so that the um, stuff doesn't crease. And this is called Kat Von D setting powder. Do you have any advice on skincare for the face? I've struggled with acne only over the past year or two, but I have eczema, so acne products dry me out. You know, one thing I've learned about skin not working up for me on YouTube this position um, one thing I've learned is that something is gonna work for everyone something different is gonna work for each person and it's the same thing with diet that's why it's like there's no one diet that works for everyone it's like it depends on your body it depends on your skin type and um, you just kind of have to try different things I think you know the basics are again like just making sure you clean your face and sticking to more you know I don't think that when it comes to skin natural is 100% the most important thing I believe in a lot of natural products for the household and other things but sometimes you need like good quality um, brands that are made in the laboratory if you have skin conditions if you have good skin then sure natural products will do the job but sometimes you need a little bit of help to fix certain things. So I don't know, for me, Skin Medica is a good brand. If you guys have heard of it, it's more expensive, but it lasts a long time and it, it's really repairing for the skin. And, um, and yeah, I think, you know, if you have acne, again, acne is just a representation of what's going on inside your body. So instead of thinking, okay, how can I fix this topically? Or how can I disguise this with makeup? Figure out, okay, you know what? I'm gonna think long-term and I'm gonna heal myself from this. And uh, the only way to do that is to <clears throat> work with a naturopath, find out what's going on in your body, find out why you're having this inflammation, because acne is really just inflammation in your body. And then, um, yeah, and then heal it from the inside. It's gonna take months, it can take years, but you know, imagine not having to suffer with that again. It's a good feeling. And so, you know, I would never, I remember from my back, I went to the doctors and they all said, oh, take antibiotics, it'll get rid of the acne. I'm like, no, that's just, 
covering up the, the true root cause. I don't want to do that. And plus, antibiotics are really bad for you. And for something like this, where it's not really hurting my life, it's just aesthetically unappealing, then of course I'm not going to take antibiotics. All right. Um, hi, Damaras. So which concealer do you use? I used the NARS concealer in Chanel. And the powder is the Kat Von D powder. Yeah, so there's lots of things that you can do to detox. Okay, I'm gonna do some eyeshadow. Um, I'm gonna use this little curved brush. And I'm gonna do some brown eyeshadow just in the corners and the creases. So this just kind of pop, makes your eyes pop more, makes them look a little bit bigger. And I basically always do this. So I just put it in the creases of my eyes. And this is the um, Nude Beach palette from the Balm Cosmetics. Okay, so I'll answer some questions on YouTube. Do you think sushi rolls are unhealthy to eat? You know, I used to think sushi was like a healthy food option, but you always have to look in the ingredients, always. If you look at the ingredients at like a normal sushi place, there's always sugar. They use sugar to make the rice sticky so that it sticks together. So no, it's not healthy. There are some places where they will say sugar-free, um, but that's very rare to find that. So no, it's not. Plus, you know, carbohydrates are just sugar. So once they get put into your body, it turns into sugar. And so you want to not have too many of those. And if you are gonna have carbs, you wanna have the health sources and not refined carbs. So does your 10% off for waist trainers apply to Amazon too? No, it doesn't. So that just applies to the website. Um, but if you are shopping on Amazon, we do sales quite often. Like yesterday or maybe today, we have a sale for Amazon Australia. And um, so yeah, you just gotta follow us on social media because we do random one day sales every now and then. And now I'm just taking this like, um, golden color from the same palette and just putting it on my eyes in those areas. All right, any other questions on YouTube? Castor oil, yes, castor oil is great. It's great for hair growth. If you want to grow your eyebrows and your eyelashes, you could use castor oil as your makeup remover. Um, I actually use a lot of coconut oil. So every day after the shower, I use coconut oil all over my body. And I use it as a mask in my hair sometimes. So I think coconut oil is kind of one of the best options for your hair because it's not going to be as... Um, you know, it doesn't make your hair as oily, so 
you know, you don't have to shower 10 times before you get your hair back to normal. So I'm just gonna put that same color right underneath my eyes like this. And I don't know why I do it, but I think it just looks better. So just like that, I think it just kind of helps with the eye color and makes it pop more. Yeah, this whole celery juice thing is like a new new fad, but I think it's legit. I think that there are all benefits to drinking celery juice. So I haven't really So I'm going to take this um, iconic illuminator. This stuff is amazing. And I'm going to use it here just to give me that glow on my cheekbones. So I put a little bit like one drop on my hand. And then I put it with the same beauty blender right here and then blend it out and I bring it up as well so you can see now it's shiny and then I do that on this side and bring up here so you can see that's a lot that was a lot put some on my nose too just at the tip Oh, that was too much. Just gotta blend it out a lot. Okay. I think that's blended. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put some blush. This is a stick, it's like a cream blush. I just got this from Sally Hansen. It's called Palladio. I'm just going to put some here and here, and then I'm going to blend it out also. There we go. And from here, I'm going to put some bronzer on. So this is the Tarte Glow palette, Tarte Pro Glow, and um, it's beautiful. I don't use all of this stuff in here because it's a lot, but I do use it to sculpt and contour. So with this brush, whatever it's called, I'm going to use the sculpty one and I'm going to go again, like I'm overemphasizing these cheekbones because when you're, today I'm filming videos for YouTube and when you film videos, your face completely washes out, at least I, when I do for my camera and I lose all the color my face I look super pale and so I kind of have to exaggerate when I'm doing my makeup okay so Denise says I'm an extra small on a traditional waist trainer should I do small or larger for the 25 steel waist trainer with zipper so the traditional waist trainer is a lot different than the um, 25 steel bone waist trainer of course so there is a separate size chart for that so um, if you're an extra small on the traditional should I do small or large for the 25 steel bone uh, the one with the zipper is tighter than the one without the zipper so I would say um, maybe a large but I'm not 100% sure I'd have to see like know what the measurement is around your waist and also see a picture of the body shape because your body shape is also going to make a difference um, and uh, you can use a size chart in the, in the, uh, on the website for that as well and the 25 steel bone waist trainer it doesn't necessarily give you faster results I mean it is more intense so you can wear fewer hours during the day than the traditional waist trainer and see the same results Okay, so if you wear the traditional waist trainer eight hours a day, you could wear the 25 steel bone waist trainer for maybe three hours a day, and uh, you'll, see, you'll see results. And the only limitation with that one is that it doesn't have the three different torso lengths right now. We are coming out with a short torso version of that, but right now it's a medium torso. So it doesn't work for everyone depending on your torso size. 
So I'm just gonna go in with some highlighter from this palette and just kind of go around my face. So this kind of like gives you that fake glow. If you don't have that glow from within, this is how you get it with makeup. And turn my nose a bit, okay. A little bit more here. Okay, so now you look all shiny. And if you want, you can even put some on your bones here. Now my face on my, my face looks way better than on my chest, my skin. Okay. All right, moving on to the eyeliner. So I'm gonna use this um, Tarte Sex Kitten liner. It's a pencil and Do you wash your beauty blender after every use? Um, I should wash it after every use. I wash it after every other use. And I just use the Dr. Bronner soap. So it's a natural soap and I just put it on my beauty blender, squeeze it, wash it several times and it's good to go. So I'm just gonna do like a faint line here. It is a black liner, so I don't want to put too much because then it can look a little bit too intense. But I do this because I'm gonna wear false lashes. And when I wear false lashes, I need to have a line or else they will show. So that's one eye. Um, so how much water do I recommend? Uh, I just recommend, <laughs> my recommendation is to always have a water bottle beside you. I think if you always have a water bottle beside you, you're just gonna be more likely to sip on it so I just bring my water bottle with me everywhere. I make sure that I take at least a couple gulps every 20 minutes or whatever. And then throughout the day, I'll have enough water. You, don't, you also don't need too much water. I think I used to believe that you need to have like overdose with water, have too much water, but it's also not that necessary. But I think for the most part, most people just don't drink enough water. And then I'm just gonna blend it out a bit, um, just so it's a little bit more even and not as harsh. Go on the sides too much. And the same thing here. Live stream stopped on my phone because I had the time limit. Oh, am I still live? Am I still live? I don't know. I have this like a uh, social media time limit on my phone, limits me to an hour a day, and so it just turned off. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go in with some mascara. So this is the Better Than Sex Too Faced Mascara. So mascara is great, but I feel like it's just not enough. So I like to wear false lashes. because so I think that makes the biggest difference in my look is having those lashes. The 
this requires concentration. All right, so I got the mascara. I'm gonna put some on the bottom too. do my false lashes I don't know what happened on Facebook sorry guys I'm gonna end this because I think that it froze on Facebook and uh, for the false lashes I'm gonna grab Ew. looks like I don't have any with me I'm gonna have to go grab some okay, I'll be right back <sighs> one second these false lashes that I've used previously. And I'm just gonna glue them and then I'm gonna do my eyebrows while the glue is semi-drying. Do you guys have any other questions? <laughs> yeah, honestly, if you're trying to learn another language, I think uh, watching YouTube videos is a great way to start. Um, I'm trying to learn Spanish, and so I watch these telenovelas. Here, it's really popular. They're called, they're soap operas. And um, I'll use English subtitles, but then sometimes I'll challenge myself to watch the entire video without any subtitles. And, you know, I can't understand everything, but I do pick up on some words, and then slowly, slowly, you learn. Okay, so, put some glue on these things. So these uh, lashes are from Amazon, and they are really affordable and really natural looking. I really love them. They're called Christina with a C. Okay, so let that dry a little bit. And I'm gonna use this um, Charlotte Tilbury brow pencil to kind of work on those brows. And so I'm just gonna start at the outer edge and kind of do the perimeter of the brow first. One thing I'm really bad at is brows. I never get them right. And my brows are so different. They're definitely sisters and not twins. but I have had my brows microbladed, which I think makes it a lot easier when you're doing makeup. So you kind of have a line to work with. It's like a kid who has um, a coloring book. So you can draw within the lines. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna brush it out a bit. Done with this look. It looks pretty dark actually. Alright, so we'll do the lashes. Try and get it as close as possible to the lash line. See, look at the difference in this eye versus this eye. It's a big difference. 
but it still looks natural. Natural. dry a little bit and one last thing here is the bronzer so I'm going to use this like golden orange bronzer called femme couture and I'm just gonna go once again over the cheekbones over the forehead so I look like I was just in the Sun and to finish off I need to have my lips the most important part, I feel like the lips kind of bring everything together, the lips and the eyebrows. What should I use? So I'm gonna use this lip pencil, NYX. No idea what it's called, but. Some makeup on my lips. So lip liner first. Alright, got the lip liner and now we just have to have some lipsticks. So this is the, everyone keeps asking me about this color. This is the Meat Matte The Bomb. It's the same brand as the palette and it's color Dottine. It's like an orange color which works well with my hair. a lot of questions on YouTube there's actually more on Facebook um, a lot of a lot of people I don't know on here do I use coconut oil for cooking yes um, coconut oil is a saturated fat and so it's stable under high temperatures so you do if you are going to cook foods then coconut oil is one of the best options next to animal fats, lard, ghee butter. Um, but you don't wanna cook with like vegetable oils. You don't wanna cook with olive oil. You don't wanna cook with, um, yeah, those, those oils are just not the best options because under high temperatures, they become rancid. And so they cause free radical damage in your body once you consume them. If you want to learn more about this because this is actually really important because free radical damage um, relates to aging and also um, disease like cancer and, and you know all diseases in the body and so if you want to really learn more about this I have a video about it you can search for five foods you need to stop eating now on my youtube channel and I go in depth about cooking with oils because technically, you know, in an ideal world, we wouldn't fry any foods because frying foods is really, really bad for your health because of the way that the oil oxidi oxidizes with the oxygen in the air. But if you are going to cook with foods you want to use uh, with oils, you want to use the saturated fats. And you never want to eat deep fried food. If you want to, you know, be healthy and energetic and vibrant and young and look beautiful forever, you don't want to have deep fried foods. It's not just about the, the, the acne that you get on your face within a week of having fried foods. It's like the long-term effects of having that oil that's been sitting in this machine at high temperatures being recycled over and over again. It's just so bad for you. So yeah, so really, yeah. All right guys, so that was a long video and I'm all done. I'm gonna be filming some videos today for the channel, so I'm excited about that. Um, if you guys didn't know, I release four videos every week. So between my two YouTube channels, I have the Lux Curves YouTube channel, 
all about girly things, and then I've got the Lux Biz YouTube channel, which is all about business. So between the two channels, I release two videos per week on that channel and two on this channel. So it's a lot, and um, I only film videos like once every three weeks, so I get them all done in one day. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do all day today. I hope you guys have a very amazing day. Make the most of it. Feel gratitude, feel love, you know, find the beauty in anything, because you really can if you look for it. It's all about, okay, what are you looking for? And uh, yeah, all right guys, take